This presentation is builds on, on, on work that I've published a long time ago and work that I am still uh, doing and, and, and haven't published. And uh, uh, very much, as, as Ron said, is an attempt to, to bring a business history and the new institutional economic history into conversation. Um, so the, the problem I address is one that uh, you, many of you are uh, dealing with in your own work or are familiar with from uh, a very large uh, literature, which is which institutions or forms of organization promote impersonal markets and how they do that. Now, the uh, test case uh, I use uh, is uh, um, the way in which uh, um, Jewish merchants uh, formed their own partnerships and built uh, forms of business cooperation, both among themselves and with members of other uh, non-Jewish uh, trading community in uh, the in long distance trade um, based in uh, Jewish merchants that were uh, resident of the port city of Livorno in Tuscany uh, between roughly 1600 and 1800. So why is this, uh, um, I argue, a revealing test case for uh, general questions concerning uh, the um, formation of uh, impersonal markets in pre-modern Europe, that is uh, in a society in which uh, all groups were organized in uh, legally and socially segregated uh, communities. Uh, Livorno, uh, many of you probably would know, was one of the main uh, <clears throat> uh, hub of uh, those Jews who were expelled from uh, Spain and Portugal in the 1490s. Uh, it grew into uh, the largest uh, Sephardic communities of Southern Europe and rivaled with Amsterdam in terms of both the size of the community and the forms of um, privileges, liberties that were granted to Jews. Uh, in 1593, the rulers of Tuscany um, issued a, a charter that was addressed to a variety of communities, but really from the privileges that it included, it targeted uh, Sephardic Jews. Interestingly, uh, Livorno was the only Catholic city in which Jews resided without a closed ghetto, and uh, they were not required uh, to wear a distinctive sign as according to canon law. They were granted not only freedom of worship uh, and uh, uh, the right to intermarry, but uh, the charter included a number of uh, um, specific privileges that in, in short uh, made Jewish merchants insofar as their economic activities were concerned, um, the bearer of the same property rights as non-Jews. They were guaranteed the safety of their people and their goods, including uh, in, in times of warfare. Um, they were uh, explicitly told that their account books and, and, and all forms of uh, uh, merchant papers would have probatory value in Christian courts and uh, other uh, concession of the sort. They were also given, uh, which is a, a, a singular uh, privilege, um, uh, the right to form a Jewish tribunal led by essentially lay merchants, not by rabbis. Uh, these uh, merch this tribunal only oversaw obviously uh, disputes among Jews, uh, but all disputes between Jews and non-Jews uh, were uh, brought to the Christian courts. So as a result, uh, Livorno, which as I said, you see from the map, there is no specific ghetto. There was an area behind the synagogue where poor Jews lived, lived but there were also <clears throat> um, wealthy Jews who lived in the same buildings uh, as Christians. Um, the, the result is, is a form of uh, acculturation that is extremely rare, if not unique in other parts of uh, pre-emancipation Europe and, and probably the most visually 
uh, the, you know, the, visually the, the, the best way for me uh, is to show you this portrait, uh, which was painted in Venice, uh, but uh, represents one of these uh, uh, very uh, highly acculturated and well-to-do Sephardic merchants who were uh, virtually indistinguishable in their attire from the uh, uh, Christian peers in terms of, of uh, their time. Now, how did uh, these Jewish merchants organize uh, their businesses? Uh, in Livorno, they had a very limited uh, menu of enterprise forms. Essentially, they could either be sole proprietor or have a general partnership. That is one in which all um, partners are fully liable. And in this case, uh, in Tuscany, it was no longer needed to record uh, to record these partnership in uh, with a notary, uh, something that uh, um, Tuscan merchants usually by, by and large stopped doing after the 13th, 14th century. As a result, we don't have a paper trail of the universe of all the general partnerships that operated in this area. They could alternatively uh, organize their partnerships in, as a, in, in limited partnerships, uh, which uh, theoretically are supposed to be uh, more um, desirable form of partnership, both for the investor, for the, for the active investor and, and, the, and the passive investor. In that case, they had to uh, record, uh, to, 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 to deposit a summary of the partnership uh, with the central tribunal uh, in, in Florence, with the uh, merchant tribunal in Florence. And uh, as a result, we have uh, an amazing paper trail uh, uh, to which I will speak. They could go to an notary or not go to an notary among themselves and write up an ad hoc contract. Uh, there is very little evidence uh, uh, that after the middle of the 16th or, or after around 1600, uh, uh, merchants actually did that. So uh, these merchants, uh, I find, uh, their own partnerships were, um, as far as I can tell, almost always general partnerships and uh, among a rather selected subgroup of the diaspora. Uh, this is uh, the last will of one of these Western Sephardic merchants in Livorno, Jacob uh, Baruch Carvalho, who when his son, Abraham, uh, married another uh, a member of the Sephardic diaspora, Esther Belilius, he bequeathed uh, his assets to any children that would be born from Abraham and Esther, or he says, uh, any children who will be born from any other marriage that his son Abraham would contrive with a woman of the Jewish nation of Portuguese or Spanish descent, born of parents living in Livorno, Venice, London, Amsterdam, or Aleppo. So the point is that you know the the they actually had a very uh, specific uh, number of uh, points of references and families. So the, the, partner, the general partnerships were formed among uh, <clears throat> families who intermarried and the dowries were a very important source of merchant capital. And uh, uh, the, there is a very restricted pool of families from whom these uh, uh, general partnerships uh, drew their partners. That said, uh, and this is the work I've done in, in, the, in, 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 in a book published more than 10 years ago, uh, by studying one of these partnerships uh, that uh, um, fortunately for us, uh, um, as a result of their bankruptcy, uh, the, 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 the tribunal seized the, all their merchant letters uh, as probatory evidence, and therefore we can study. Um, their business alliances and networks. One of these uh, families that belonged to this upper echelon of the Sephardic diaspora and had, you know, a dual partnership between Livorno and Aleppo, just as the last will mentioned. Here we say from uh, we see from uh, the <clears throat> destination of their business letters. Um, obviously, because of the transportation system at the time, 
we cannot make a, a direct correlation between number of letters in a certain location and frequency of interaction because at some destination it took so long for the letters to arrive uh, that uh, that was only rational to send fewer letters. Um, but they, um, you can see that uh, the, there are a number of uh, uh, destination, Venice, Genoa, Florence, uh, uh, where they had both uh, Christian and Jewish uh, correspondents and agents. Uh, there are cities like Amsterdam and, and London where they only traded with other Sephardic Jews. But soon you will see that Lisbon and Goa, which highlighted, were two destination of the letters where there simply were no Jewish residents officially uh, because Portugal had expelled Jews in 1497. Uh, and uh, there they traded, in fact, in Lisbon with Italian merchants uh, who were uh, themselves organized in a sort of uh, uh, religious community. And the Italian church still stands, uh, unlike most pre-18th century earthquake buildings in, in downtown. And uh, in Goa, they traded with uh, a family of uh, uh, Hindu merchants who played an important role uh, in the relationship between the Portuguese and uh, local communities, both in terms of uh, financial transfers and uh, diplomatic uh, translators. So they were able, in spite of having this uh, very uh, close-knit form of general partnerships, through commission agency, uh, um, they traded, particularly in coral and diamonds, coral exported from the Mediterranean and diamonds coming from India. The point I'm making is that they were able to build a durable and reliable uh, business relations with members of communities with whom they never intermarried and in the case of Goa never had face-to-face -face interactions. The uh, bankruptcy uh, of uh, this particular uh, firm, the Ergas and Silvera, which I study, came as a result of uh, uh, their uh, credit relations with a Persian Jew who betrayed their expectations. So in fact, uh, uh, the end of the business was caused uh, by a fellow Jew, although a member of a different segments of the Jewish diaspora, um, because being an, an, an Iranian Jew, all sorts of uh, community and family relations uh, with the Western Sephardic diaspora were not there. So all this I have written extensively about it. Um, and then I looked to see whether these family, these Ergas and Silveira, ever formed uh, limited partnerships in the course of the 40 years during which they were in business. Uh, and I found that, in fact, uh, none of the partners of the Ergas and Silveira partnerships, general partnership, ever used the legal form of li limited partnership that was available. Uh, and only uh, three other, um, well, uh, on, in only three instances, uh, members of the Ergas family, which was, uh, um, had many branches in Livorno, uh, made recourse uh, to a limited partnership in one case in 1718 uh, to build uh, partnerships uh, among cousins during a very um, extensive and acrimonious uh, litigation over, over an inheritance. And the other two limited partnerships in which uh, um, this man, and there are probably two different uh, Rafaelo Ergases, given the time the difference, uh, um, between the two are, you know, rather minor business partnerships. So why is this important? Um, as you're all familiar with, limited partnership is supposed to be a very uh, efficient form of organizing business for the general partner who, um, in a context like a pre-modern uh, Italy, would not have access to obviously venture capital, but also other uh, ways of borrowing uh, money easily beyond their kith and kin, um, a general partner uh, can put his labor and only if he wishes also some uh, of funds and recur, uh, has recourse to a number of passive limited partners 
who uh, invest in his uh, business and are only liable up to the amount of money that they invest, while the general partner is fully liable also with his uh, personal and family assets. So this is supposed to be a, a form of uh, um, enterprise organization that is uh, um, favorable to both uh, general partners who are seeking a uh, um, source of capital beyond uh, their immediate kith and kin, and for investors who have extra savings and look for a you know the medium risk kind of uh, investments. Uh, most of the scholarship on this business uh, form of organization concerns either their origin or their diffusion. Um, and those are some more or less controversial issues about it. We have, as far as I can tell, virtually no large body of evidence concerning who used these uh, forms of this form of uh, organizing business uh, in pre-modern Europe. Uh, and uh, uh, Florence is an exceptional case because as a result in, in 1408, as you can see, uh, the then Republic of Florence passed a decree, later renewed, um, uh, upon demand of the merchant community in the city, um, ordering the limited partnerships which existed as a, as a form of organization uh, of any sum and operating in any place in the world had to be registered in an appropriate book in the Mercancia, which was Florence Financial Tribunals. As far as I can tell, there were uh, either no fees or very low fees. I only found one evidence of one merchant who had to pay a little bit in order for the registration to occur. Uh, the other advantage of, you know, I, I can speak to why I don't think there's a major issue of under registration, but the other uh, advantage was that uh, it was, you know, the merchant uh, um, tribunal was also the place where you would uh, litigate the contract in case of a dispute. So having a summary registration as demanded uh, already in the, in, the, in, in the tribunal was an advantage. Um, and uh, um, so you could either go yourself or you, the real fee was you had to pay somebody to if you were not operating in Florence. So 28% of uh, the in investors mentioned in these uh, contracts appear to have had to send a delegated proxy. That would be, that would be a cost. Um, so the archives in Florence house 46 registers that uh, the first one, unfortunately, from 1408 to 1445 is lost. Um, in which all of these summary contracts are uh, <clears throat> read, where, where, they are, where, where they are registered. Um, I selected 20 of them and collected all the data in them. Uh, the result is, it's also one of the advantages is that uh, the notion of Tuscany um, changes a little bit uh, or in the course of 365 years I analyze but not in a dramatic way. Politically, there, there's enough uh, uh, geographical stability that this series uh, can, can be uh, analyzed over time. Um, and uh, there are almost 5,000 contracts in total uh, registered over 365 years, probably a little fewer because of some mismatch uh, in the uh, database that I'm building. Uh, there, is, there are a total of 728 locations where these businesses operate, um, and, but the more than half of them, 57%, are operating in Florence, and 12% are operating in Livorno. So I will concentrate on uh, those of Livorno, which are uh, fairly uh, symptomatic of the larger trends in this series. And uh, the first observation I want to emphasize is that uh, limited partnership appear, appear, uh, limited partnerships appear to be um, not, they never become the 
the preferred way of organizing businesses, neither in Florence nor in Livorno, in spite of the availability of this, uh, you know, within quote technology. So we know from administrative sources, uh, roughly the number of merchants that operated in Livorno in certain years. So for example, in 1765, 1793 and 797, and we see on the graph the very low number uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of merchants uh, only in the 17, it's only around 1800, there's a spike uh, and, and 19 limited partnerships were created or registered in that year. So as I said, the point here is that vis-a-vis -vis the number of merchants operating in this city, very few organize their businesses uh, as limited partnerships. If we then look at whether uh, this technology uh, of limited partnership, because of, uh, of uh, the specificity I mentioned, because of the uh, nature of uh, the way in which the capital of limited in investors was protected, in theory, uh, if you read the secondary literature, should be uh, a form of a business organization that favors businesses alliances between members of different communities uh, in the sense that you don't, you know, you'd only need to know something about uh, the net worth and abilities of uh, the general partners in order to invest in their business. You don't need to, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a technology that precisely allows you to bypass the kind of social peer monitoring that a general partnerships demand because everybody's fully liable in those. Uh, so here I looked at uh, all the limited partnerships formed uh, in, in which there are both Jews, uh, in which Jews are both general partner and limited partners. Um, and here you can see that there's over th the course of the entire series, 365 years, there's only a total of 146 limited partnerships in which all partners, both active and passive, are Jewish. 91 of them are in Livorno, which is not surprising, given that that's where the rich Jewish merchants reside. Um, but uh, compared to the number of uh, uh, Jewish uh, merchants active in every year, as we saw in the previous slides, this is a small number. If we then look at limited partnerships formed uh, in which there are both Jewish and non-Jewish investors, the number is really, really tiny. There's a total of 31. Um, and uh, uh, it's uh, uh, if you over the entire course uh, and uh, uh, there's only you know two years when there are two that are formed. If you look carefully at what are these limited partnerships in which there are both Jewish and non-Jewish investors, um, first of all, you see that uh, um, in the majority of cases, uh, the Jewish investor is actually a passive investor, which would be uh, contrary to what I would expect uh, theoretically, given the Jews in Divorno where uh, the uh, one of the richest, if not the richest business community. And you can imagine that there is a, a, an incentive uh, in theory for um, say the Christian upper class uh, of the area to use limited partnerships as a form of investment. Uh, but this is, is actually not the case. Um, but as you can tell uh, from the dates and the numbers, uh, it is an extremely rare uh, occurrence uh, for Jews and non-Jews to uh, form limited partnerships uh, together. So uh, briefly, why, you know, I say, why didn't the dog bark? That is, why did uh, Jewish merchants in Livorno did not avail themselves of this technology? And why didn't uh, Christian and investors uh, either? So one, uh, you know, it, it is complicated and I'm looking forward to, to your thoughts because here I'm, you know, uh, I'm trying to explain causality of something that did not happen. Um, and I don't have uh, um, the data to do a real counterfactual. 
So I'm speculating on uh, uh, reasons why uh, this uh, uh, form of business organization that uh, the new institutional economics and legal theory assumes to be so superior that everybody would flock to it, in fact, did not perform uh, its magic. So one is I think we need to revisit uh, the idea that general partnerships uh, were uh, backwards and uh, uh, not useful. And in, we can think about a number of advantages that general partnerships had in relation to the information and transportation technology of the time. Because uh, in a general partnership, you delegate the decision-making process uh, to your partners overseas. Uh, and a lot, some of these uh, J Jewish partnerships uh, had uh, uh, members of the general partnership on both the northern and southern shores of the Mediterranean. And compared to, say, um, a number of English partnerships which have been studied uh, uh, in which uh, the general partner resided in London and their um, factors or representatives were resident in the Levant and uh, that the, the resident uh, uh, agents had to wait for specific instructions uh, uh, arriving from London and given the time that those instructions uh, took to arrive, uh, often uh, the market conditions uh, had altered. So we shouldn't just think of general partnerships in the world of long distance trade of the time as, uh, as inefficient and revise uh, some of their um, advantages. A general partnership could accept um, equity investments uh, um, through uh, other means uh, than limited partnerships. Uh, the problem is that we don't have um, systematic records. Uh, it's not possible to study systematically how did that happen. We know that this, uh, uh, um, you know, from Francesco Dattini, the, the famous uh, merchant of Prato in the 14th and 15th century did it. Uh, and others, um, and uh, uh, Richard Goldthwait and other scholars have uh, uh, identified through uh, account books uh, uh, evidence that this happened. Um, and uh, so we cannot exclude uh, uh, that general partnerships also were able occasionally to raise money beyond uh, their principles. Um, and uh, that uh, cannot unfortunately be studied in any systematic way. The most important uh, uh, reason I would uh, suggest for the reason why um, limited partnerships did not uh, <coughs> took did not take root in uh, early modern Tuscany is because of the lack of public information on the personal credit standing, uh, the the reputation of merchants, uh, uh, their net worth, but also their um, uh, cash flows, et cetera, were not uh, object of any form of public information. Um, word, uh, uh, you know, word of mouth, uh, uh, business correspondence, and uh, that kind of uh, uh, privately shared information uh, is what uh, informed these uh, uh, merchants, be they Christians or Jewish, about uh, uh, whether a merchant had been, you know, punctual in their in their uh, payments, whether he was about to go bankrupt, and so forth. Um, in 18th century London, uh, there are um, initial evidence of some bankruptcy um, published in uh, newspapers. Uh, but as far as I can tell from having perused through those newspapers. Uh, um, the, uh, the information about bankruptcy, first of all, is published after the fact. Uh, it is not systematic and probably concerns only a select few uh, uh, merchants. Uh, so it is not uh, that in, 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 northern, uh, uh, in northern Europe, uh, there was uh, much better public information on um, what merchants' reputation was. Um, moreover, um, one question that I'm planning to investigate as I 
uh, dive deeper into the database I have uh, built is whether some individuals uh, were better situated to capture uh, the advantages of limited partnerships than other. Um, in, in some cases, I can tell already that there are some individuals who use these limited partnerships uh, more often uh, and, and sequentially. Uh, so for, for, for some, it, they might have provided some advantages and I'm not yet able to uh, tell you something conclusive about it. Um, and lastly, um, there are a variety of other investment opportunities in uh, this environment. Uh, um, that uh, may explain why uh, passive investors uh, did not flock to limited partnerships as opposed to why, you know, what, what was, the, was, 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 was the supply as opposed to the demand. Um, so um, if you have uh, some savings uh, in Tuscany, um, you can invest uh, uh, in uh, companies that trade in marine insurance, uh, you can uh, have uh, uh, brokers uh, invest uh, some of your money in bills of exchange, which had become a form of not just of remittances for commodity trade, but also of uh, speculation on currency arbitrage. Via business correspondence, we have evidence that, that from Tuscany, uh, some of uh, uh, the well-to-do Merchants purchased, for example, stocks in the Dutch and, East, and, and English East India Company. So you were not um, limited geographically in the kind of uh, uh, commercial uh, investments that you could make. Um, so limited partnership was only one of uh, the uh, opportunities in the commercial sectors. You could also buy bonds in the public debt and obviously uh, invest in land and, and real estate. Um, so, so one should not uh, therefore um, overestimate the importance of limited partnerships as um, a um, outlet for investment. Uh, it remains a, a puzzle that uh, this uh, um, supposedly superior technology of limited partnerships uh, um, did not uh, uh, prevail over uh, other forms of organization, notably the general partnerships. And at the same time, it is remarkable that Jewish traders were able to uh, build a business cooperation beyond their kith and kin, even without recourse to this technology.